Hello everyone, we are back for some Star Wars. Uh, it's been a while, um, me getting sick, put a kibosh on it of course, but uh, here we are. And we are on chapter 6 of Cross Current, so um, just as a reminder to everybody and kind of to myself also, remember this book flips back and forth between 5,000 years before the Battle of Yavin and 41 and a half years after. Um, and the currently, um, we are in the 41 and a half years after, pre the present. Um, and we were watching a Sabak game, and now it's looks like it's going to erupt into a fight. And that's where it picks up, so... The Weequay spun around when they heard Jaden ignite his lightsaber. Their eyes again. Jaden was on them before they could aim their blasters, and a downward slash, spin, and backslash left both of them holding only a smoking half of a weapon. The crowd milled in panic. Blaster fire from near the Sabak table sounded above the screams and shouts. Jaden cursed, kicked one of the Weequay in the chest. He felt the armor underneath his clothing and bounded through the churn for Kedrin and Mar. Regus shouted over the tumult, his voice as high-pitched as a siren. I want Kedrin fall! Bring him to me! Jaden spotted Kedrin and Mar retreating toward the exit in a crouch. The Sabak player call, called Irsh fired his blaster at Kedrin. It missed wildly, but put a smoking black hole in the back of one of the dancing girls. More screams, more panicked flight. Neither Kedrin nor Mar returned Iersh's fire, though both held blasters. Perhaps they feared hitting an innocent. Iersh fired again, nicked Mar's shoulder. The impact spun the Sarian around and knocked him to the floor. Kedrin grabbed him by his good arm and tried to heave him up. Iersh aimed another shot. 
Jaden fell into the force, used it to augment an upward leap, flipped, landed in front of Iersh, and drove his lightsaber right through Iersh's surprised eyes, right between Iersh's surprised eyes, putting a smoking tunnel through his skull. Jaden was already crossing lines he had hoped not to approach. One of the cowering females nearby screamed as Yersh's body hit the floor, the hole in his forehead, a third eye, staring accusations at Jaden. Even Regus stood and stared in wide-eyed wonder at Jaden and his lightsaber. Jaden leapt into a force-augmented backflip, nearly hit the ceiling, cleared half the room, and landed in front of Kedron and Mar. Up close, he sensed a faint force sensitivity in Mar. He wondered how he had missed it earlier. Stay behind me, he said. I think we will, Kedron said, and finally got Mar to his feet. The Weequay bodyguards must have ca carried extra weapons, for they appeared out of the churn near Regus, each wielding a blaster in each hand. Their presence seemed to renew Regus's confidence. Kill them all, Regus shouted, his fat jiggling with rage. The Weequay fired again and again. Jaden's lightsaber was a humming blur of green, deflecting shot after shot. He angled the deflected shots to hit the ceiling, and it soon looked like the cratered surface of a moon. He feared it might collapse before everyone cleared the room. This way, Jaden said, and maneuvered Kedron and Mar toward the wall. With most of the spectators out, and presented at last with a clear field of fire, Kedron and Mar both finally answered with their own blasters. Kedron hit one of the Weeque in the chest, but the bodyguard, as Jaden had suspected, wore blaster-resistant armor under his clothing. The impact staggered him, but barely put a pause in his fire. Heads only, Ked Kedron said to Mar. Get down, Jaden said, and booted over another table for them to use as cover. Kedron and Mar hit the floor behind the table, while Jaden used his lightsaber to cut an exit in the hole's corrugated plasteel wall. The moment cost him, and a blaster shot clipped his shoulder. Pain ran the length of his arm, birthed anger. His, he spun, blade once more positioned to deflect the Weequay's rapid fire, and tried to regain his calm. Out, he said through gritted teeth. Cheat! Riga shouted after them. You are a blasted cheat, Kedron Fall. I don't cheat, you heap of bantha dung, Kedra spat back. Yes, you do. Yes, you do, Jaden said, deflecting another pair of shots. A piece of metal came loose from the ceiling and fell to the floor with a crash. Well, I did. I'll explain. Just go. What? Kedron said, his good eye fixed on Jaden, his lazy eye staring through the hole Jaden had cut in the wall. Blast it all. I have a reputation here. Blaster fire sizzled into the wall and cut short his words. Jaden, holding his lightsaber in one hand, deflected a trio of bolts harmlessly to the ceiling. Go, Captain, he said. Mar fired two shots to get the Weeque down behind the Sabic table, and then all three piled through the hole. They hit the night-shrouded street. Glow lamps and makeshift light lighting cast the street in a patchwork of shadows. Patrons of the hole were streaming out, shouting, cursing, pointing. Passerby stopped in the middle of the street to witness the commotion. An anchorax reared up in its hind legs, growling. You have transportation? Jaden asked, feeling his arm to check the damage. Minimal. Who are you? Mar asked. Yes, who are you? Kedron seconded. Your friend, Jaden said, and deactivated his lightsaber. Well, I can't argue with that, Kedron said. Though I can't say I expected to ever have a Jedi for a friend. Follow me. They darted from through the street, through the crowd, pursued by shouts until they reached a parked swoop and a speeder bike. A searing, Jaden said, ad admiring the raw lines of the swoop. Kedrin nodded as he slid atop it. Double up with me, to Mar, he said. Back to Junker, and then off this rock until we get things ironed out with Regus. Mar fired up his speeder bike, wincing at the pain in his wounded arm. You all right? Kedrin asked him. Yes, Mar answered. I am all right. Kedrin started to, to throttle the swoop. Stopped. Why do you stay with me anyway? he asked Mar. 
The Syrian looked puzzled by the question. You are my friend. Kedron stared at him a moment, seemingly at a loss. Jaden felt as if he had witnessed something private. He wondered if Mar knew he was Force-sensitive. I am that, Kedron said at last. He gathered himself and said over his shoulder to Jaden, Meantime, whatever business you're offering, it looks like we'll take it. Shouts from the crowd sounded above the hum of the swoop's engine. There, there they are! The Weequay burst out of the crowd, brandishing their blasters, searching the darkness for Kedron, Jaden, and Mar. Time to go, Kedron said, and Jaden grabbed the handrails as the searing blazed into the sky. A couple of half-hearted blaster shots followed him into the air, but soon they had left Far Point and the black hole far behind. Did you see F Flagan get out? Kedron shouted to Mar. Who? the Sarian asked. Flagan. Mar frowned. I do not know. I think so. Kedron nodded and drove. Only Jaden heard him say, I hope so. Okay, now it switches to Kel, the guy that eats brains. Um, Kel had slid against the wall as violence emptied the room. Screaming and shouting, beings of all sorts had fled to the common area, then into the street. In the midst of the chaos, he watched Kor, Kedron fall, and the Sarian flee through a hole in the wall. Watched Regus, the fat human, order his weak way bodyguards after them. When it was over, Regus stood alone in the center of the suddenly quiet room, the king of so much flotsam, surrounded by toppled chairs and tables, scattered credits, spilled drinks, and four corpses, three of them still smoking from blaster fire. Kel watched Regus waddle to the body of the player at the Sabak table, whom Jaden Kor had killed, Iersh. Regus stood over the corpse, towed it with his slippered foot, and shook his head. His breathing sounded like wind through a leaky window. Get me a drink, he shouted over his shoulder to no one in particular. No response. The common room was empty. Regus cursed. From outside, Kel could hear the report of more blaster fire, a few scattered shouts. He presumed Jaden Kor and the crew of Junker had escaped. No matter. Kel would be able to follow them. Their destination remained in the Sabak room. He would catch up to them later. He had seen the mesh of their lines, seen it intertwine with his own. He knew their fates were as one. At the moment, he was hungry. Proximity to the Jedi had sharpened his appetite, and since he had soon, would soon be leaving Faust, he could feed more freely. The ghost need not be so circumspect. Regis grunted, huffed, and slowly managed to lower himself to all fours. Still wheezing, he began scrabbling among the debris on the floor, no, batter, no doubt looking for the data crystal that the tumult had sent flying. Blocking Regis's perception, Kel slid in behind him, following him as he sifted through credits and the grime of the hole's floor. Where is it? Regis whispered between gasps. Where is it? He threw aside credits, ice, glasses, until at last he hit upon what he sought and held it aloft as it were a, tr as it were a trophy. The clear data crystal shimmered in the light of the over overheads. Got you. With another series of grunts and wheezes, Regis put his feet under his girth and rose. Now for some Keela, he said. Kel stepped around to stand before him and let his per perceptual screens drop. Regis's eyes fixed on Kel, widened, his mouth opened. Kel had a finger to his lips for silence, while their Dane Nasi danced in the space between them. Be still and silent, Kel projected. Regus sagged, his brow wrinkled in a question, but he did as he was instructed. Kel took the data crystal from Regus's slack fingers, placed it in the pocket of his jacket. He felt Regus resisting the shackles of Kel's command, but only weakly. Kel smiled, took Regus by the shoulders, stared into his eyes, and freed his feeders. Regus's mental resistance intensified. He struggled against Kel's grasp, opened his mouth as if to scream, but managed nothing more than a stifled gasp. 
The feeders squirmed up Regus's nostrils, burst through tissue and into the brain beyond. Regus stiffened as blood leaked from his nose. Kel fed. His consciousness broadened, but the weak soup of Regus's mind gave only the barest hints of fate's purpose. Kel's consciousness drifted back to give him perspective, and he gave the network of Dane Nossi that composed the universe the sum of the choices of all sentient beings, but he perceived no order, merely an inchoate design with no meaning. Irritated and disappointed, he devoured all of Regis's sentience, all he was and would be, with minimal satisfaction. Regis was sustenance, nothing more. He withdrew his feeders, slick with the bloody stew of the human's mind, but let them dangle from his face. Regis's body fell to the fo floor with a thud. The emptiness in Kel yawned, and he gave it a name, Jaden Kor. Now more than ever, he knew he would learn the fate only when he di dined on the soup of the Jedi. Fate had brought them both to the hole. Fate would bring them both to the moon of Crate's vision. There, Kel would have a revelation. The coordinates in the data crystal were the point in space-time where he would rendezvous with Jaden Kor, where he would finally learn the truth behind the veil. A human woman, one of the dancers dressed in a gauzy green outfit that showed as much as it covered, walked into the room. Seeing Kel standing over Regis, she froze just inside the doorway. The cup she held fell to the floor, spilling Keela. Her mouth hung open. Her eyes bulged. A small abortive scream emerged from her throat. Perhaps her mouth was too dry to muster much more. Kel's feeder snaked into his cheek sacks, leaving a spatter of blood on the floor. He eyed the woman and held a finger to his lips. Shh. He blocked himself from her perception and walked out of the hole in the wall, following Jaden Kor and Kedrin Fell. Her scream started when he hit the street. The swoop and speeder bike blazed into the lightless airspace over Farpoint Landing Field. Jaden shielded his mouth from the dust of his with his sleeve and looked back toward Farpoint from time to time, but saw no sign of pursuit. A few dozen ships, freighters mostly, dotted the dusty plains of the field below, framed in ad hoc halo lighting, mounted on tripods. Upturned faces greeted the arrival of the swoop and speeder. Start the remote launch sequence, Kedrin shouted over the wind to Mar. The Sarian was already tapping keys on his speeder's data pad, controlling the craft with only one hand and his legs. The wound in his arm caused him to wince as he worked. You are used to rapid exits, I see, Jaden said over the swoop's engine. Kedrin nodded. Comes with the work. Where's your ship? The Z-95, he pointed to the far edge of the field in his yellow and white starfighter. At his yellow and white starfighter. Over there. Kedrin squinted against the dust and erupted into a laugh as short and abrupt as a blaster shot. Does the Order put all their Jedi into flying cans these days? That thing's an antique e even out here. Jaden smiled. It's a bit more than it looks. I hope so, Kedrin said, because it looks like something I'd have trouble selling for scrap. He angled the swoop for it. I'll drop you there. Let's get off planet. Then we can talk about this business proposition you have, and you can explain to me how I, how we, cheated in the Sabbath game. I'd prefer that we stay together, Jaden said. You would? Other than the fact that you fly a ship as old as the galaxy and I don't, why is that? Jaden heard the suspicion in Kedron's tone. He assumed it came with life on Faust. You'll have to trust me. We can talk on your ship. Trust? Kedron smirked over his shoulder. We don't do a lot of that out here. If I had meant to harm, I could have done it already. Kedrin nodded, looked over to Mar. This fellow better be a Jedi or we're going to be in real trouble. He could be a Sith, Mar said absently. You a Sith, Kedrin asked, half smiling. Of course not. He says he's not, Kedrin said to Mar. Sith are liars, Mar said. That's true, Kedrin said. You both know better than that, Jaden said, not quite sure if they were jesting or not. You can trust me. 
I'm telling you both that you can trust me. Kedrin and Mar stared at each other across the void between their speeders. Finally, the Sarian shrugged. I trust Mar's instincts, said Kedrin, so you're in luck. But I'm captain on Junker, even when a Jedi is along for the ride, understood? Understood. I have an astromech that you could... I do not allow droids on my ship. The statement took Jaden back, aback. Never? Never. I don't even like them dealing my cards, but there's nothing for that. Still want to hitch that ride? Yes, Jaden said. He activated his wrist comm. R6, activate the remote launch sequence and the autopilot. Get her into orbit around Faust's largest moon and wait there. If you don't hear from me in two standard weeks, jump back to Coruscant and alert Grandmaster Skywalker. Jaden felt Kedrin tense at the name. The job will take two standard weeks, Kedrin asked. That's going to depend on where it is. You don't know where it is? No, Jaden answered, but you do. To Mar, Kedrin said, this is a mysterious man. So it seems, Captain. I know what I said outside the hole, but I don't consider this a firm deal until I hear more, Kedrin said to Jaden. Understood. They watched Jaden's Z-95 levitate upward on its thrusters, sending swirls of dust into the air before it turned and accelerated into the night sky. Jaden felt odd watching R6 go off without him. To whom will I confess, he said, his voice overwhelmed by the swoop's engines. Droid work, droids work, uh, sorry, sorry, droid works fast, Kedrin said. Seems we're not the only ones used to rapid exits. Comes with the work, Jaden said. How do you know Master Skywalker? Kedrin looked back at him, his lazy eye off to the side. Let's talk about that aboard Junker, too. There she is now. Kedrin nodded down at a Corellian freighter, visible in wall lights through the top, open top of one of the field's many makeshift hangars. He circled, then started to descend. A YT-2400, said Jaden. Sticks out a bit here, doesn't it? I salvage junk. I don't fly it. Jaden saw... The disc-shaped freighter normally sported a cylindrical escape pod connected to the starboard side of the circular fuselage, but Junker featured an attached Starhawk shuttle. Must have taken some work to replace that escape pod with a Starhawk. How do you manage the fittings? By not using droids. Junker's engines were already venting gas and warming. Jaden noted further modifications to the ship. A pair of universal docking rings, rarely seen outside of military uh, rescue ships, and a complicated assembly on the rear that looked vaguely similar to a laser cannon. Is that a tractor array on the rear? Kedrin nodded. Short range, yeah. Sometimes we dock with a derelict and take what's worthwhile. Sometimes we have to tow the whole thing back for disassembly. And you make a living at that? Doesn't seem like there'd be enough floating free out there. You'd be surprised. You just have to know where to look. Indeed. They descended through the open top of the hangar and sat down beside Junker. Kedrin and Mar bounded off their speeders. How are we doing, Mar? Kedrin asked the Sarian. Thrusters are already hot. We lift off in 25 minutes, Captain. Get to the cockpit and finalize the launch sequence. Then we see at, to that arm. Jaden... Help me get these speeders aboard, he stopped. He stopped. Wait, did you catch a shot back in the hole, too? Trivial, Jaden said, showing the wound. Kedrin examined it with a practiced eye while Mar hurried into Junker. Looks a little more than trivial, but if you say so. Kedrin, Kedrin and Jaden muscled the speeders up the landing ramp and into Junker's hold. Jaden's arm screamed every time he flexed his biceps, but he bore it. Hurts, yeah? Kedrin asked. Jaden tilted his head to acknowledge as much. We'll see to it when we get aboard. A blaster wound, even a graze, is nothing to take lightly. I've had blaster wounds before. Yeah, me too. That's how I know they're not to be taken lightly. Kedrin chewed his lip, as if gathering his thoughts. You asked how I knew Luke Skywalker. 
Hearing the Grand Master's first name rather than his title sounded incongruous to Jaden. He had not heard anyone other than the Grand Master's close friends and family refer to him as Luke in many years. My parents were children on outbound flight. They survived the crash in the readout. I was born there, 35 standard years after the crash, give or take. The admission surprised Jaden. He imagined there were few survivors still alive. He was not sure what to say. He did the math in his head. You were an adolescent when Grandmaster Skywalker and Mara Jade Skywalker rescued you. I was, Kedrin. Its expression softened, and he leaned against his swoop. Mara was kind to me, to all of us. I was saddened when the vids reported her death. Jaden flashed on his on his vision, the sound of Mara's voice in his ear on the windswept surface of the frozen moon. As was I. Your parents? Kedron's expression turned blank, but Jaden saw the pain beneath it. They died there before we were rescued. I'm sorry. Kedron waved a hand to shoo away the memory. Long time ago. Since then, I've been doing a little of this, a little of that, but I'm mostly settled on salvage these days. The roar of swoops flying over the hangar drew their eyes, and both pulled blasters. Jaden's free hand went to the hilt of his lightsaber. The running lights from half a dozen swoops and speeders buzzed past, blotting out the stars. Regus's thugs? Jaden asked. Could be. Let's get these aboard and get out of here, Kedrin said. Junker's hold was packed to the cross beams with storage containers, raw materials, unusable pieces of electronics and vehicles, and two land speeders. Over there, Kedron said, nodding at an open space in the hold. Once they had the speeders in the hold and secured, Kedron lifted the landing ramp. You used the force to effect that final sabacant. I did. I would have changed the outcome of the hand when you lost the crystal, but Regus or one of his lackeys nearby had some kind of handheld electronic cheater. By the time I realized it, you'd already lost. Kedron slammed a fist on the seat of the swoop. That spawn of a diseased bantha was cheating, and he called me a cheater. He regarded Jaden from under his heavy brow. I guess I owe you then, eh? Jaden did not bother to answer. This still isn't a firm deal, though. Business is business. Mar's voice broke over the ship's speaker. Ready for launch. Kedron spoke into his collar comlink. We are on our way up. When they reached the tight con confines of the cockpit, Mar was already seated and working the instrumentation. Jaden took in the consoles, the scanners. Junker had an amplified sensor array, probably to allow more thorough reception and scanning at longer distances. Jaden eyed Mar, trying to get a better sense of his force sensitivity. He determined it was faint. Mar probably had no idea. Kedron sat, activated the communicator. Farpoint Tower, this is Junker. We are hot and gone. He did not wait for an acknowledgement before flying the freighter out of the lit hangar and into the dark. Thrusters angled the ship skyward, and the night sky and its field of stars filled the transparasteel cockpit window. Chew stim? Kedron asked Mar. The Sarian removed a square of chew stim from one of the dozen or so pockets in his jacket, offered it. Thanks, Kedron. Unwrapped it, chewed, blew a bubble, popped it, and we're off. Junker's engines fired and the ship pelted toward outer space, and Jaden hoped toward answers. And that is the end of Chapter 6. And... Um, it doesn't have a note at the beginning like it has about whether it's in the past or the present. And I see the first names on the page are Kedron and Mar. So it looks like we have yet another chapter or part of it that is going to be in the present. So, yeah, we'll can pick it up um, Friday um, for the next chapter. So I will end this session. And come back in a few minutes for a little bit of oblivion. So I will see you in uh, about 10 minutes. <laughs>